SpaceX's Starbase can be regarded as the most bustling construction site in the world these days. Watching the team work tirelessly for just an hour may leave your eyes in awe. Let's take a moment to appreciate their current progress as well as take a look at what the future holds for the aerospace industry. Let's start at the production site. Booster 11's methane tank has begun stacking in the mega bay, and Ship 29's nose cone stack was lifted to join in on the fun. The latest discovered prototypes of the current Starship are Ship 34 and Booster 15. For all this to be done quickly in the future, SpaceX's new building is also rapidly taking shape with the supporting beams for the bay's outer skin being installed last Friday. Indeed, it is time to lay the 24-7 combo to rest and send them off to Valhalla. In the meantime, SpaceX has temporary and and intermittent road delays from 10 p.m. today until 2 a.m. tomorrow. This should be due to Ship 27's test over at Massey's or Ship 25 returning. Perhaps S26 is leaving the engine installation stand? There are no confirmations, so we'll need to wait and see. Now moving over to the launch site, the launch mount is making rapid progress in strengthening its foundations. The insulated cryo piping was removed to access all roads from where the protective structure formerly known as the doghouse was located. The drill seems to have completed its mission. And take a look at this. This drill deserves its own medal, doesn't it? Oh, and don't forget our photographer, Starship Gazer. As always, the work that you're doing is amazing. The video also shows how the workers at Starbase are working together. SpaceX is an incredible mix of talented people from the thinkers to the doers. But back to the launch site, the hole is a lot deeper than most of us would have thought. You can see the rebar cylinders dropped into the holes are well above the height of the OLM. The OLM is around 70 to 75 feet high. The cylinder rises 30 feet above so that they go down 100 feet or 30 meters. The pilings seem to work because of the resistance from friction on their sides, not what they are resting on at the bottom. This all looks picture perfect, but hopefully the next launch doesn't dig it all out again. Aside from ruining a perfect portrait, I'm pretty sure the locals wouldn't appreciate another dust storm. Meanwhile, the Falcon team just broke a new limit for themselves. On Sunday, 56 more Starlink internet satellites lifted off atop a Falcon 9 rocket from Cape Canaveral on SpaceX's 32nd launch of the year. Notably, the batch of 56 Starlink satellites tied the record for the heaviest payload ever launched by a SpaceX rocket, matching the figure on four previous Falcon 9 missions with a full load of Starlink spacecraft. After the Starlink 5-9 launch, SpaceX has sent 4,447 Starlink satellites into orbit. For reference, the Starship has nearly 10 times the payload lift capability of a Falcon 9 rocket, with greater volume for satellites as well. I don't know about you, but that sounds exciting. SpaceX currently has more than 4,000 functioning Starlink satellites in space, with more than 3,400 operational spacecraft and nearly 500 moving into their operational orbits, according to a tabulation by Jonathan McDowell, an expert tracker of spaceflight activity and an astronomer at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. The rest of the Starlink satellites were prototypes or failed platforms that have been retired from service and guided back into the atmosphere to burn up on re-entry. Sunday's mission continued deploying SpaceX's older generation Starlink version 1.5 satellites. After two launches earlier this year, started placing a new generation of Starlink satellites in orbit. The new satellites, known as the Starlink version 2 Mini design, are larger and offer four times the broadband capacity of the older design satellites. The new Starlink version 2 Minis carry upgraded phased array antennas and a more efficient, higher thrust argon-fueled electric propulsion system. They also have two solar arrays compared to a single extendable solar panel on each Starlink version 1.5 satellite. Moving on, as the year of 2023 progresses toward its latter half, the rest of the rocket industry is becoming increasingly active. United Launch Alliance started testing on the Vulcan Centaur rocket Friday from the launch pad at Cape Canaveral. The company said testing involving the spacecraft's primary subsystem was successful and cryogenic propellant loading operations began on both the rocket's booster 
stage and the Centaur 5 upper stage. According to ULA, it loaded more than a million pounds of liquid methane, hydrogen, and oxygen into the rocket to simulate launch day. Assuming that is successful on Friday, teams will once again fuel the rocket early next week and allow a full countdown leading up to a 6 second flight readiness firing or FRF test, a critical milestone before a summer flight is to take place. The team has performed an exhaustive review of the hardware, software, and ground systems. We have successfully completed tanking tests of the booster and the upper stage individually, a ULA spokesperson said to Spectrum News in a statement. The FRF will be the final functioning test for the ground systems, software, first stage, and engines. Those who have been watching the development and testing campaign on the Vulcan rocket may recall the rocket previously rolled out to the pad at SLC-41 on March 9th. That was followed by a tanking demonstration test the following day. However, later that month, there was an unplanned blast that occurred at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama, not far from ULA's manufacturing facility and neighboring Decatur. ULA CEO Tori Bruno put out a statement on Twitter regarding the Centaur 5, stating during qual testing of the Centaur 5 structural article at MSFC, the hardware experienced an anomaly. On April 13th, he tweeted a video of the burst and noted that the investigation was ongoing. And because of the ongoing investigation, ULA had to forego the May launch window, which lasted about four days, starting on May 4th. On Thursday, while responding to Vulcan questions on Twitter, Bruno said that the investigation has not yet concluded, but very close now. Been moving fast once we got access to the test asset, in reference to the Centaur 5 upper stage at Marshall. He further elaborated in the following tweets regarding the length of the investigation. The first few days were waiting for 19,000 pounds of liquid nitrogen to boil off from the liquid oxygen tank. Then, we needed to crane off a load head loose platforms, the PLF simulator, and the payload simulator, etc., without damaging the evidence. Bruno recently said a launch of either June or July of this year is possible, with his latest statement being summer. And for the last part of today's episode, the Ariane 6 rocket will now debut no earlier than the spring of 2024. One of Ariane Group's key suppliers for its next generation Ariane 6 rocket appears to have confirmed that we won't see the launch system take flight this year, a report from Space News reveals. During a May 10th earnings call, executives from German aerospace company OHB predicted that the rocket will perform its long-delayed debut launch in the first months of 2024. Ariane 6 is the successor to the Ariane Group's Ariane 5 rocket, which recently launched the European Space Agency's Jupiter JUICE mission. Last year, the European Space Agency announced that it expected the first launch of the Ariane 6, which was once slated for 2020, to take place in the fourth quarter of 2023. Now, an update on that timeline has come from a third party providing parts for the rocket. Ariane 6 has not yet launched, but we hope that it will launch in the early part of next year. Marco Fuchs, CEO of OHB, said during a presentation about the company's quarter one financial results. OHB produces tanks and structures for Ariane 6 via a subsidiary called MT Aerospace. Fuchs also added during the call that he is getting more and more confident we will see the first launch of Ariane 6 early next year. I think we are within a year of the first launch, and that is psychologically very important. The OHB CEO didn't go as far as stating an exact date, however, saying that it is not for us to publish. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and we'll see you next time.